Hey everyone, I'm Brandon from Snowflake. If you've got a code base written for Spark and want to see how it works in Snowpark, the Snowpark Migration Accelerator can take some elements of Spark and automatically convert them to Snowpark. Let's take a look at how this works. In this video, we're going to do a quick overview of the Snowpark Migration Accelerator's conversion moment. Take a quick look at the output, how to set up the conversion, how to request help. Let's get into it. So in the SMA, we're going to pick up from where we left off in an earlier video on assessment. So at this point, I've already created a project. I've run my assessment and I've viewed the assessment results. Now we're going to jump on to conversion. When you select continue to conversion, it'll take you to the conversion setup page. Not as many options as the original project setup page. Recall that the SMA is a local application that takes in files from a local directory. So this is the same directory here that I specified in the original project creation page. And now I'm on the conversion setup, that information is brought over. You can choose to convert a different code base or a different set of files if you'd like. I see that the same source is here as I selected earlier. And I do need an access code for conversion. If you already requested an access code, you should see a list of them appear below. If you do not have an access code, you can select inquire about one, choose your source platform. If this information is not already filled from the project creation screen, you can fill this in. And this will send a message to the SMA team saying that you need an access code. You should receive an email within seconds with your access code information. The access code is a series of letters and numbers. And I'll go ahead and I've already received mine. I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in here. And once you've pasted in your access code, you should see this access code activated successfully. If you do not see this, if it says failed or if it says nothing, feel free to reach out. You can select the help menu and go to report an issue. You can say things like, I did not receive my access code. Tell us who you are. Include the log files if you would like us to better locate your execution. Now, before I step off of this, this is the best way you can request help for any reason in the SMA. The tool crashed, a file was not scanned, a mapping or a categorization of, an, of a SQL element or Spark element was not correct. Any of that you can do here with report an issue. Just fill out and describe what happened. Tell us who you are so we can follow up with you. And it's always best to include the log file. So I'll go ahead and click send and my issue has been reported to the SMA team. Note that you can also, if you don't receive any information back from us and you didn't receive your access code, you can always contact us directly by sending an email. So we'll click Start Conversion. And what's happening in the conversion phase is the same thing that happened in the assessment phase. The SMA is building its semantic model of your source code base. From that, all the assessment information is built that you've already seen. All that same information is getting built again here. This is because we're not sure if you've changed code in the code base, if you have added or removed files, any of that. So the complete assessment information is rebuilt in conversion mode, but with one added bonus of outputting the Snowflake code. You'll see the same summary that you saw when you originally ran the assessment. I'll skip down a bit to the issues page. Issues are how we help you complete the migration. It's important to note that no conversion is ever 100% in an automated tool like this. This is an accelerate. It is designed to get you on the road to migration much faster, but it cannot do the entire migration for you. We understand that, and as a result, we output as many issues as we possibly can to help you understand the work that's left to do. These issues are cut into three categories. Warnings, which tell you that something looks different, but should still work in Snowflake. The conversion issue is where something was identified but could not be converted. And the parsing issue is where code could not be read at all. These issues have many different categories, and each of these categories take you directly to the documentation. So if you wanted to learn more about a particular workaround related to a warning, or if something was not converted, you can select the code and it will take you to the documentation site 
which will give you more information about what is happening in this issue code, what you can expect to see in the output code. So the tool will put in comments that look just like this one that include more the code itself, but also more descriptive information about what's happening in this code. And there's also some additional information about what you can do to mitigate. And at the bottom, there'll always be recommendations for next steps. If you select view reports, you can also see each of these codes by line number and file. I chose the issue CSV there. We've looked at some of these other reports in the past, but we'll just look at this one right now. And we'll see that I have all my codes broken out by my file and line number. So if I wanted to see where a particular issue was occurring, I can see that here. I can also sort through them and work through them programmatically. If I wanted to deal with all of my conversion errors first, I could do that. If I wanted to deal with a specific type of code first and deal with it programmatically across my execution or across my code base, I could do that. I could also sort by file. So I could see which files have what codes and to start working through them file by file. Generally, we would recommend that you sort by category first, deal with your conversion errors and then check off your warnings. We do recommend that you look at all of the warnings and then deal with them by code. So deal with them by severity, then by code across all code bases. And then when you're pretty sure that you resolve them, you can go by file type. Of course, however you want to work through your issues is up to you. The information is all present here. Finally, you can view the output code now that we've run a conversion. As a quick note on the setup of this in your local directory, note that you will see this conversion folder put into the output folder that you specified here in the conversion setup page. But if that's the same output folder that you used here in the project creation setup page, then you're gonna see more of these folders if you go up a level. So if I go up one, I'll see every conversion that I've done and every assessment that I've done where this folder was the output folder. Note they're all organized by date and time. Having run multiple demos for multiple videos, I have multiple executions. But we'll focus on this one. And if we look at the output, we'll see that it has a bunch of files in it. And this file structure will exactly mirror the file structure in the source. So I have all of these files that were in my original output directory. I had some subfiles here in some of these outputs. But these subfiles are preserved, so the directory structure remains exactly as it was in your source. You can see that I have some notebooks and some script files. Let's take a quick look at what some of this output code could look like here. So I can see on the left, I have some before code. Spark references are replaced with references to the Snowpark API. Where there's an EWI or there's a message, that will be inserted just like we saw in the documentation with some additional information. When it says see documentation for more info, note that the link to the EWIs, while not present in this output code in a comment, are available in the application. So if I go back to the issue summary, I'll be able to find that EWI and I could select the link. Notebooks are also converted. So if I look at this original notebook here, as an example from Spark, there's gonna be Spark references. And if I look at a comparison with the output code, we'll see those are replaced with references to the Snowpark API, along with error codes or issues or just warnings when something is removed or not necessary. And you also see that some things are just changed. For example, this temp table creation looks different in Snowflake over here on the left than it did in Spark. This doesn't come with an EWI because something was changed to a functional equivalent. And that is our very quick look. I'm sure you'd like a much longer deep dive into the code, and we'll do that in subsequent videos, look at specific conversions. And that's our quick overview on conversion with the SMA. Hope you have many happy conversions, and let us know how we can help.